This is the stock of Annaly. <clears throat> this is the monthly chart. And what can you see? What can you see? I see a huge distribution over the last 20 years with the most recent leg down from the highs of $40. I also see a potential double bottom forming at the $15 level. Typically double bottoms are a bullish formation. However, Jim Cramer recently said he didn't like Annaly, it was a dividend trap. Now, what does Annaly do? They are one of the largest mortgage real estate investment trusts in the United States. And as you know, as interest rates have gone up over the past 18 months, and as you know, there is roughly $1 trillion that is set to mature in the coming years. And as you know, as the interest rates have gone up, the bonds on the books of these companies have gone down, making these assets and stocks less valuable. Just refer to the banking crisis for a lesson in that. This article comes from Benzinga. Jim Cramer says, this 14% yield stock is a trap. So while a double digit dividend yield may appear enticing to income investors. It is crucial to exercise caution when approaching these ultra high yielding names. You definitely have to be mindful when you see uh, a 10 plus percent yield on a stock. You have to question whether that yield is sustainable or not. In a recent lightning round segment of CNBC's Mad Money program, a viewer asked host Jim Cramer about Annalise Capital Management a mortgage real estate investment trust with an eye-popping yield. Company pays quarterly dividends of 65 cents per share, giving the stock an annual yield of 40%. But Kramer's not a fan, and for the first time in uh, a long time, I agree with Kramer. That's a stock that I think is a trap, he says. It's also, it always looks like it has a high yield, but the fact is it's been a trouble performer for years and years. I want to stay away from it again. This is the monthly chart. It hit a high of $40 back in June of 2021, and it's been on a steady decline. Now, according to Market Beat, uh, dividend strength is weak. Uh, there are four factors um, that they consider when assessing a dividend strength. Yes, it is a leader um, in terms of paying a dividend. Um, however, dividend growth does not have a long track record. Of and based on EPS estimates, um, Annalee will have a dividend payout ratio of 90% in the coming year. Now, again, the projected earnings growth is just 1.4% um, and a dividend payout ratio of 90%. This means that 90% of their income, net income, will go towards paying the dividend. If we take a closer look at their dividend, we can see that the annualized three-year dividend growth has been four, negative 4%. And according to this metric, dividend ratio payout is a negative 115, which means that they cannot sustain their dividend payout. Now, this dividend yield over time, I'm not sure what quite happened here in October of 2021, but for momentarily, they had a dividend payout of 53%. So this was an anomaly. Um, we can't really take that into consideration. If you look at the average over the last couple of years, you can see it's been roughly uh, 10%. Um, and the yield has been steady over the last 
uh, 12 months at about 13 percent so it would appear that it's sustainable but you have to look at this dividend payout ratio now let's go back to the charts and you have to respect the trend line especially on a monthly chart so let's drill down a bit more on the weekly chart price is range bound obviously there are some buyers at this level is that a rally base rally okay let's put that in so we do have weekly buyers at this level uh, the $18 level however for conservative investors if you believe in annually you really want to see a break above this monthly down trend line otherwise if you do get a breakout to the upside it is an opportunity to short the stock let's go down to the weekly chart uh, the daily chart and we did have an opportunity to short you have sellers at the $20 level but the better level was to go one level higher and I'll tell you why actually had three levels in total so you have a sellers level at 2160 sellers level at $21 and so why didn't this level work out although you had a strong drop in price based on that candle there well it actually did work you had price come up on April 28th nip that zone and then shoot away so when price came back you had a reaction so all the unfilled sell orders were below this level here 2130 so price had to find the next liquidity level which was the daily sellers level at $21 So typically when you have a daily sellers going against a weekly buyers, typically the weekly buyers is going to win out. However, big picture, if you scroll to the monthly chart, no bueno despite the weekly buyers level at 18. This one you got to be very sure about getting into and one of the surest ways is a break of this monthly trend line before going long. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Please like the video.